We're driving up to see Giant Redwood National Park staying at Crescent City and it's great to see the Pacific once again. We're actually on Highway 101 which is what we followed up between LA and San Francisco but then we went inland to see Yosemite and then drove northwest and eventually hit the coast again on Highway 101. There's a the Pacific out there. It's a bit cooler up here than it was down in California. Well we're still actually in California but in Southern California. Really nice beach here just pulled off the side of the road along one, Highway 101 at Redwood National Park. Some really nice waves out there. Uh, it's a deserted beach, nice enough sand. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, a, it's fairly cold here, it's about 17 degrees. We'll get a lot cooler tonight. It's really nice just to drive along with the um, large waves because it's apparently quite a deep, it's quite deep quite quickly out there. So and you get quite big waves coming in very close to shore. Unlike down in LA when it, you've got very shallow waves coming in on um, Santa Monica and Venice Beach. Here today in the giant Redwood National Park, um, part, part near Crescent City, I think this bit's called Judiah Smith um, State Park. It's really beautiful in here, you, it's uh, basically just a walk through the forest and it's all quite similar what you're seeing, but it may be similar but it's all pretty astonishing too. These are all coastal redwoods, tallest trees um, on the planet. Not quite the thickest and girthiest, those were giant sequoias covered in the Yosemite episode. Um, there's quite a lot of trails out here, different lengths, but really it's just about coming out into the forest, spending time here, just looking at all of the various different redwoods that are around. There's well, hundreds, thousands of them here, and it's just a, a very um, good trail to follow. This one we're doing is called the Boy Scout Trail. It's only a 20 minute drive from Crescent City, where we're staying in Airbnb. Um, we're still in Northern California, but this is as far away as you can get from Southern California, which is just overcrowded with so many people. Um, whereas here, there's, it's back to being more like um, Northern USA. Um, so yeah, it's easy to get accommodation, easy to drive around, no queues. And there's really not many people. Um, there are a few people up at the trailhead, but once we got out, really not that many. And you get nice little views around every corner, just like this one coming up to now, a couple of trees together. So it's actually really interesting to see trees that have died, because they're a bit different. Obviously the living trees all look the same, very, very impressive, but all the same. But um, so you're walking through some of the dead trees, look a bit different with fungus, and obviously they might have fallen in different places. It's really hard to give you an impression on video of just how big these trees are. They just stretch up into the sky forever. It's really quiet around the forest, no sound of animals really or birds, it's all very quiet. This is um, early November, which I think is a very nice time to come because it's about 15 degrees today, so good hiking weather Celsius. Um, but um, there's not many, it was easy to get parked at the trailheads, apparently in summer that can be a bit more difficult. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to just spending some time in the forest today. This sort of view is what you get all um, around the, the park as you walk along the path, just Dozens of huge great trees, trunks stretching, I don't know how many metres, maybe a hundred metres, I think it's at least a hundred metres up into the air. It's just amazing to walk through. Like I say, there's no particular sites, seeing individual sites to see. Here there's a few groves and things, but really it's just about being out here, looking around the forest. I think this is definitely one of the best things we've done in California. I mean, I'd really, this didn't really come up as a top tier attraction. It was only when I was looking around for things to do because I need to return the hire car so I decided it was probably easiest to drive from San Francisco back up to Seattle that's a few days drive so I was looking for things to stop off and do along the way and that was when I found all of this place and it's really great really glad I did spend a day here I could spend a lot longer in the day and even if you don't like nature this is a pretty great place to come there's quite a few trees falling down across the path which you just have to duck under which is very hard but it does give you a great idea of just how big these trees are for how many steps you have to take to go under them as I'm doing now. 
you can see just the trees just go on forever and ever. These must weigh several, I don't know, I don't know how many tons they weigh, but it's a lot. I tried to give an impression of just how big the um, girth of these trees um, actually is. Jane is just modelling with arms out just to show just how wide it is. It, the tree just utterly dwarfs her. I mean, obviously that's just in width and girth alone, and then the tree just goes on up for a long way. It's not even one of the bigger trees in the park. But yeah, it's still pretty tall. As well as all the trees, an awful lot of greenery as well, and a lot of ferns down here. You sometimes come through these little groves, which are pretty nice to walk through. Just a lot of greenery up from, from the trees, the non redwood trees and ferns growing off the ground. It really is a very, very nice forest. It's probably the, probably the best forest I've ever been in, I'd say. Reached a rather uninspiring fern waterfall. It's just past the Boy Scout tree. This is marks the end of the trail for us. We'll just turn back and retrace our steps now, back to the trailhead of the Boy Scout trail. Interesting example here of the effect of fire. There's an awful lot of fires here. Um, many of them natural, started by lightning. And as you can see, these trees have had some fire damage in the past. I suspect just like the Sokoas, they have natural defences against fire because they're so big and long living that fire is inevitable in this part of the world and they're never going to have it at some point in their lives. This is an example of some of the fungi that grows on the trees after they've died. I've seen this in a few different places, sort of disc-like fungi with a green bottom and red outline, uh, sorry, black outline to it. This bit of the trail is a really good example of just how many roots there are in the area. You can see if you walk along, there's just all these huge roots just stretching across the trail, which is obviously, it's a very, this is a very popular trail that's trodden on all the time. And yet they're just roots absolutely everywhere that you're walking along. Obviously you need a, a huge amount of water, um, these trees, given how big they are. And you can see how they get it. Boy Scout trails, um, three miles out and three miles back, six miles in total. It's quite quick, took us about two hours. That was all, it's all pretty flat. You're just walking on trail with quite a few roots to it, but that's about all, it's pretty easy going. See from the car park here, the, even the trees around the car park area are pretty massive compared to the cars. Coastal redwoods are very good for um, storing carbon. Because obviously they're enormous when they're growing, but even when they fall, like this one is here, they're very rot resistant, so they keep the carbon stored for about another 100 years after they die. You can see this one is lying on its side. You can barely even see it's a tree from some angles, but it's basically what we're looking at there is a lot of ferns dangling down from where its roots were when after it fell and you can see the trunk lying down over there. This is all part of the a different trail we're doing now. We're going to Grove of the Titans, a much shorter trail. Grove of the Titans has a few interesting features. First is the walkway. Walkways put in to protect the roots. It's a very popular place that so gets a lot of tourists and uh, that damage the roots so they put in a covered walkway so there's no roots damage there. You can see here a, a very, very fire damaged tree, a very, very dead tree too. Again, that just shows how much fire there is around here, very natural occurrence. And then you've got the absolutely enormous living redwoods and particularly this one, which is absolutely enormous. It's hard sometimes to tell whether they're just one tree. It looks like they're more just a collection, but there you can see where they all branch out. It's very impressive. This is a pretty nice part of the trail that they've um, arranged, which here we have a tree that's fallen and you can just see the uh, top of it, I think it is. And then the path is set uh, literally alongside the fallen tree. So all to the right, where I'm walking now, is a very old fallen redwood. And you can see the path deliberately made to the side of it here. We go through a very narrow bit here with other roots and rock and things on the left. More fallen things up above. It is a, it's very interesting just to get up close and you can see just how big these things are. It's ta taller than I am um, and that's on its side. You can just see there where the roots are over there where it originally fell. I think it's the roots. It could be either way up. 
Another day driving, a little bit of it along the Pacific Coast Highway. So we head north from Crescent City, uh, just going up along the Pacific Coast Highway and turning right to head towards Eugene, Oregon, then up to Portland. We still stopped about 30 miles north of Crescent City. It's a very nice part of the Pacific Ocean. A few rocks just jutting up. It's early morning, it's only about just after nine. There's a really strange mist. You can see, see here, it's just a band of mist. You keep get, getting them along the road. It'd be bright sunshine, absolutely clear, and then you just have a band of mist you're throwing in maybe two minutes of driving, and they just keep recurring along the way. Something to do with the ocean, no doubt, but I've not seen anything quite like that before. Kind of interesting. We're up into Oregon now, where well, we just actually stopped at a petrol station, and since what it was, it's all a bit bizarre. First time I've ever had someone fill up my car for me, but whatever. But there is this very nice cove, just to pull off the road, which is really nice. I think the mist adds a bit of uh, nicety to it. I think this part of the Pacific Coast Highway is much underrated. It's, I think this is nicer than the, the main, the iconic one down in the south. I mean, it's all part of the same Pacific Coast Highway, but the one in the south gets a lot more attention. That's what most people drive. But just around here, it's extremely nice to drive along the coast. And you get the Pacific, and it's a lot cooler as well. 